Hello, everybody. I'm Lee Blickley from HuffPost, and today I am joined by the CEO and co-founder of the baby line, Frida Baby. Chelsea Hershorn is here. Everybody welcome her. Now, Frida Baby uh, provides parents with the products that might sound strange, but are completely necessary. And as a pregnant woman myself, we're both expecting babies. I'm very excited to welcome her. So let's welcome Chelsea once again. I'm so Thank excited you. To have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. I can't wait for you to tell me everything I need to know about oh, being a mom. We will. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so let's start about uh, the beginning of your journey with Frida Baby and how you came uh, to be the CEO of the company. Sure. So... Uh, for those of you who don't know Frida Baby, Frida Baby uh, makes products for parents for the less than sexy, I would say non-Instagram worthy moments of parenthood. Um, but I came to the baby industry in a somewhat circuitous route. I was an attorney uh, for the Marlins, a baseball team in Miami, and my neighbor who lived across the street from us in Miami Beach had started this business with the nose Frida. Uh, sort of medicinally branded uh, nasal aspirator for babies out of her garage. It was invented in Sweden. She was selling it to a few pediatricians' offices and um, Babies R Us and some stores and had asked me if I was interested or knew anyone who was interested in taking over the business. And I was pregnant with my first son at the time, and I said uh, very politely, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my dream job on paper, but I would you know, think about it. Fast forward a few months later, I gave birth to my son, use the product that she had gifted me, um, and it was just a lifesaver. And I said, why is this product not in every corner, and why did no one tell me about it? Um, and so literally on a paper napkin in her living room, I left my job and, and committed to kind of helping build this business and eventually bought it from her and moved it out of her garage, and the rest is kind of history. I mean, what fate for you to live next door to the creator of the nose freedom? That's how life works sometimes, yeah. right? So was it the snot sucker that you had with your first uh, baby, or is that something that you helped kind of create? No, so the snot sucker and the windy existed. They were invented in Sweden by, uh, by a pediatric ENT and a gastroenterologist. And so um, we, we really focused in the first few years on, on distribution, getting these products on every corner outside of just pediatricians' offices. Um, and so, you know, we were solving a pretty ubiquitous problem with the two core products. The, uh, the fact that babies get congested and in the first few months are what's called obligatory nasal breathers. So they can't breathe out of their, out of their mouth. So if they're congested, uh, it's a learned behavior to breathe out of your mouth. So they can't, they can't eat, they can't sleep. Um, so, you know, problems that every parent faces, but no one kind of prepares you for. Uh, and so focus on distribution and really building the brand beyond just the single product, which was something um, that we were really focused on in the beginning. Just how do we, how do we create a brand that speaks to parents very candidly about uh, the, the less than sexy realities that they face as new parents that unfortunately very few prepare you for? And how did you go about when you first joined the company, uh, what were some of the ideas that you had as a new mom for products that you wanted to launch? There were so many. Uh, it, took, it took me a while to have the gumption to kind of uh, go down the product development path. I had no experience, as, as you heard. Um, but, but I started to have very, you know, very personal pain points as a parent raising um, my first son and then ultimately my second son that I figured there must be better solutions for. And so the first product, honestly, beyond uh, the two that we started with, that, that was really born out of a very specific pain point that I was experiencing was the Medifrida, which is um, a medicine dispensing pacifier. Giving my son medicine, whether it was antibiotics or uh, Tylenol for a fever, was just, it was like a three person job. One person had to you know, hold his jaw open, another person had to hold his hands down. I would sit there with a syringe and put the medicine in and it would still end up all over me. Yeah. Uh, and as a parent, that's a scary experience because they're getting medicine for a reason. You want to make sure that they're getting the accurate dose. Um, it's a really hot button topic in the pediatric community, the improper dosage of, of children, because parents say, oh, they, how much did they spit out? Was it two milliliters? Was it half a milliliter? I'm not going to give them any more. I'll give them a little more. Um, and so I was just kind of very committed to finding a solution for that problem. And I underestimated how long it would take me. I think the product development process, particularly um, in this category, takes a long time. And so something that, you know, as a business we're committed to is being nimble and quick and, and using our distribution matrix and our, you know, footprint throughout the country in 30,000 doors to funnel new products through quickly 
That one definitely took me the longest. Yeah. What is the trial period like? How do you test your products? Do you give them to parents to kind of try out? So when we were a smaller business, we started with, you know, two or three people. And now, you know, at the end of the year, we'll be 40 people in Miami Beach, which is super exciting. But uh, in the beginning, it was definitely more of a focus group of one strategy. <laughs> uh, and, and in a lot of ways, it still sort of is. We're building the team with um, an incredible group of young parents who experience these issues on a daily basis, and they are really at the heart of what informs our, our development and innovation pipeline. Um, we do use focus groups. Oftentimes, they start in our office, friends, friends of friends, um, and, and go from there. And now, as we think you know, two or three or four years down the line, whereas years ago, we were thinking of tomorrow or next week, um, we, we've cast a wider net from a, from a consumer insights perspective. But it's, it's still a lot of fun because a lot of the problems that we're tackling are problems that we experience as a group collectively really daily. And so do you guys as a group come up with these products or do you get emails hmm. or, you know, pitches from parents in the real world who are like, I would die for this product. Can you kind of develop it for me? Yeah. So I think one of the things that makes us pretty unique as a business, particularly as a consumer products business that sells to places like Target and CVS and Walgreens, is that we... We don't take ourselves too seriously from a development perspective. So we get pitched probably once a week from new parents with ideas. You know, necessity is the motherhood of invention, and mom, there's no one in greater need uh, as a group than, than new moms who, who have really great ideas. And so with those ideas, we harness them and, and help nurture those ideas with them and then build a platform for them under the Free to Baby brand to kind of perpetuate that idea in a really, you know, commercialized way that they otherwise wouldn't have been able to do on their own. So yeah, we have a lot of products at the top of our, uh, our, our innovation funnel that have been, you know, born out of the needs of, of parents, whether they're working parents for Free to Baby or um, stay-at-home moms who are just solving needs in a, in a mom hack kind of way. It's like Shark Tank for I all know. the moms. They could just come and pitch I love their it. products. I, love, I feel like Lori Grenier. <laughs> Which product um, that was pitched from a, a parent do you uh, now have on your line that you really respond to? So the products in our current pipeline were really born out of uh, personal pain points that I experienced or that parents on my team have experienced, uh, like the Medi Frida. The Smile Frida would be another great example. No one really told me that uh, you'd have eight seconds to brush your four-year-old's teeth. Uh, and, and when you do, you got to get in and out very quickly because they'll bite down and spit the toothpaste back or swallow it or whatever, anything but brush their actual teeth. And so uh, we developed the first three-sided toothbrush that hugs all three sides of their teeth at once so you can actually do the dirty work in a third of the time. Um, but, but the products that are in our funnel right now were in active conversations with a lot of non-free-to-baby parents to help them commercialize those ideas. Um, and bring them to life. Yeah, you have some of your products here. So do you have the Smile Frida here? I do. I have the Smile Frida here. It's this one. So uh, it sticks to the table. Yeah, it's cool. suction. I can't. My my children like to throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. Um, but I hate when you like have to put it down and it gets wet. But yeah, so it's it's three sided. I don't know if you guys can see. Uh, and so as whether they're biting down, whether they're you know however way you get it on their tooth. It, it covers all three sides of their teeth. And, and it's really important that you take care of, you know, a young children's child's tooth because uh, despite the fact that they fall out eventually, um, it really does, the health of the children's teeth really does impact the health of the adult teeth that come in. Um, and so we, we worked on it in conjunction with a pediatric dentist. And a lot of our products, we have kind of a cult following amongst the pediatric community. And that's how, you know, we think about the new products in our pipeline, just making sure that they would rally around whatever the innovation is that we're, that we're coming out with. We're, we have a really disciplined approach to the development process. And so uh, unless the pediatricians in our community who are you know, avid fans of the brand and the products would support it, we generally you know, don't do it otherwise. Yeah. Is that something that makes your, your company different? What, what do you think makes Free to Baby stand out in the baby industry, which is full of different brands? It's an incredibly oversaturated category. Uh, and I think what, what helps us stand out is, is two things. One, 
uh, we have a really candid and honest conversation with our community about the realities of new parenthood. We're not a lifestyle brand. We're far from it. We are the brand that happens in between your Instagram posts. There are very few brands that are as committed as we are to being there at three in the morning when you're elbow deep in a dirty diaper and you just want to go back to sleep. Um, and so I think that that genuinely sets us apart. I think the other thing that sets us apart is in, in a crowded consumer products category, particularly in the retailers where we're sold, Walgreens, Walmart, Target, you name it, um, we're run by parents. Uh, it's, it's a brand by parents for parents. And so this isn't four layers of red tape to get a new product out the door. This is, I have a problem, we need to solve it, and let's get it on a shelf for every parent in six months. Much to my team's chagrin. Yeah, and affordable, too. I know you said, uh, you know, we talked earlier this week, and you said Kim Kardashian could buy this product, and then a regular mom who lives in, you know, the Midwest can find the product, too, at CVS. Yeah, we have a tremendous amount of celebrity fans who all use the product. Um, they are, they are middle-of-the-night snot suckers, just as you and I are. Um, and I think that, that that's also something that makes us pretty unique. It's a really accessible line. There's not one single product under $20 unless some of our newer gift kits, which um, were born out of the realization that we were being gifted uh, and more baby registries than, than we could keep track of. And we wanted to be the complete gift and not just the actual gift that the parents will use on top of a beautiful cashmere onesie that'll get vomited on in two seconds. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really important to us is if we were gonna be uh, kind of universally accessible in 30,000 doors, we had to have a really accessible price point from Walmart to Target to Nordstrom. Yeah, I already got my snot sucker because it was on my registry and my one of my friends was like, this is my number one, like you need this. And I'm like staring at it every day, like what else can I get from this free to baby line to save my life? Because I am so clueless. I have no idea what's coming. Well, that's <laughs> the thing is, is there are, you know, you can read every book on the shelf um, and, and try and prepare as best you can for new parenthood. But, but very few people really tell you what to, what to really expect. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what I'm most proud of about this brand is that we really we really are on a mission to prepare parents for those realities of new parenthood, and we take that mission very seriously. And and I think, you know, it kind of it kind of speaks for itself in the way that uh, we market the products, in the way that we speak to new parents, in the way that um, we're not hiding anything, uh, uh, we're not glamorizing anything. It's very hard to glamorize uh, a baby who has gas when you have to stick something up their tush to let it out. <laughs> True. So we have products here. Um, what are your, let's say, five or five products that you really respond to and that you see parents respond to? And maybe talk a little bit about each. That's like picking your favorite child. I was like, I didn't want to say favorite <laughs> because uh, top five products that parents respond to. I'll, you know, I'll just pick the 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 top five that immediately come to mind. Um, Actually, it's right here. It's not even out of the package. This one, first and foremost, and the nose Frida is an obvious one. So, so beyond the nose Frida and the windy, the mom washer, mm -hmm. which I you'll see very soon. Uh, which again, my new mom friend is like, I could have really used this. Right. So, so your friends will tell you that they pushed for 19 hours of labor, and you know, it was it was a struggle, and you know, they're done, and they're happy, and they're home, and the baby's. She won't tell you that she bleeds for four weeks after you know a vaginal delivery, or even in a C-section where you can't wipe yourself properly to to expedite the recovery process. Um, and so what they give you in the hospital is, is imagine like a ketchup bottle that you would see at, at Burger King, right? Um, and you put your hand in the toilet, you squirt the water up, and the water falls right back on your hand. Uh, and then you have to kind of like blot yourself dry and go on your way. Right? No, this is the reality, okay? Uh, yeah, men. And so, <laughs> as, yeah, so uh, the mom washer, I think, has resonated with our community, you know, beyond what I could have ever imagined, honestly, because of the simple innovation and how true to the to the product line and the and the disciplined development philosophy that we have is just it's just flipping it on on its head. Literally, we we turned the peri bottle upside down. Uh, we put an angled spout on it so it gets the water exactly where you need it to go, and it doesn't require you to put your hand in the toilet. Uh, and so your hands dry. 
you're you're on the road to recovery uh, a little quicker and easier than you might otherwise have been. And so that's been a personal favorite of mine and based on the way that it's resonating with our community, uh, definitely a continued area of focus for us. Yeah. Um, okay, next. You know, I spoke about the Medifrida. I think, you know, it's, it's a game changer as far as making sure that your, your child gets the accurate dose of medicine every time. No pediatrician will endorse giving medicine other than with, a, with the oral syringe that comes with the medicine. And so this allows you to do just that through a shape and, and, a, and a device that they're familiar with already. And then the beauty of it is that as soon as you're done, you can kind of take it off and plug that little hole and they can continue soothing themselves right back to sleep. Uh, and so the parent can control the, the pace at which they go and it puts the medicine into the side of the baby's cheek instead of at the back of their throat, which can trigger a gag reflex and also bypasses their taste buds as a result. So really simple, again, and, and gives parents a peace of mind. These are, these, are par these are products for parents at the end of the day. You'll never see Elmo or Mickey Mouse on, on our products. These are parent uh, products for for parents who also own iPhones and who wear Nike and who you know, have other interests that transcend their identity um, as a mom or dad. And so I think between the packaging and the product design and the simplicity and the efficiency, we really try to speak to that component of our customer. Yeah. That um, one's brilliant, isn't it? That's so smart. Well, it's, it helps us stand out, mm -hmm. like you said, in, in, the, in the very crowded baby category. Where which you're just like, what do I buy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and so, okay, what's next? You said five, so that was two. <laughs> Smile Frida uh, is absolutely one of them. I think, you know, brushing children's teeth, like giving medicine is one of those things you think, all right, I'll do it, I'll get through it, whatever it is. It is truly a battle. And I think any parent in the audience here uh, will, will attest to that. And it's just, it's, you have to do it in the morning, you have to do it in the night, you can't escape it. Uh, and you always feel like you're doing a bad job because they're just not cooperating. And so to give parents that peace of mind that they can do it in a third of the time and they've covered all their bases literally um, is just is hugely helpful. So uh, the next one I think that, that I would kind of draw attention to as a personal favorite is the Nail Frida. Uh, Again, like brushing teeth, who thinks clipping nails is a big deal. For some reason, they seem to grow every 30 seconds. You cut, you cut their nails, and they come home from school, and they're just as long. Um, but what no one tells you is even as a newborn, when they come out of the womb, their nails are so sharp and so long, and their fingers are so tiny that it's very scary to cut them, and they don't sit still. Um, and so in our, in our kit, we have this curved nail file, which actually hugs the shape of the baby's nail. So it gets those sharp little corners where they scratch their face. I'm sure you've seen um, friends who have to buy like mittens or, uh, and so this really is, we kind of say like ditch the mittens. You don't have to be scared to tackle, you know, fine motor skills and the development, um, even at a young age is really important. So you can file their nails, hit all, all corners without kind of going around because it's shaped in that shape. And then the nail clipper itself has what we call a safety spy hole. So you can see the nail uh, as you're clipping it. It's really, really simple twist, just cutting a hole in the, in, in the metal, but um, one that is a game changer. And I can kind of cut my kids' nails a lot faster than I might otherwise have, knowing that I won't you know, clip their skin accidentally and watch them bleed yeah. like some Quentin Tarantino movie. We can all movie. use that for ourselves, yeah. too. Just I like a little spy hole, yeah. A lot of these products, we get we get so many requests. Why? Where's a nose frida for adults? Oh, yeah. yeah, I want this toothbrush for myself. So, it's part of our you know it's part of our pipeline to kind of focus on uh, taking each of these products and transcending the baby category into toddlers, kids, tweens. Eventually, um, right now you can kind of trace the product line to the age of my oldest child, um, and so we're trying to scale beyond that in anticipation of the fact that. You know, the, the stages of parenting change, but parenting never gets easier. Um, and so these issues that we face with babies and, and toddlers will prevail through, you know, their teenage years. It's just a different approach. Um, and so we hope to kind of be there in those moments. Last, last one. Uh, okay, the Derma Frida, right? The Derma Frida, I hate washcloths. I don't know if I'm alone in that. Apparently not because it's doing incredibly well, but... Uh, 
you get you know you get a million towels as gifts when you have new babies and they all come with this little washcloth whether it's a mitt washcloth or a wet washcloth and i just they get cold really quickly they never dry you have to lay them out and so we thought let's take uh like a really super soft silicone brush that you can hold with the suction behind your hand newborns are incredibly slippery in the bath so you need the dexterity of having both hands to kind of hold them but this allows you to do that uh, and, and wash the baby from head to toe while still being able to use that hand to hold them. Is that five? Yes. Okay. So smart, though. Every one, I'm like, I can't wait to try these. <clears throat> yeah. I got a few more months to wait, but... Uh, you won't have a choice. <laughs> uh, I do want to open it up to some uh, of the audience members. People have questions or pitches or anything. Sure. <laughs> Hi. Um, I was curious, what are some of the most common misconceptions for pregnancy? Common misconceptions for pregnancy. Um, I would say everything. Like, never read the internet. Right. No. <laughs> Old wives' tales. No. It's a, you know it's a great it's a great question. I would say that um, that after you give birth, you know, you women tend to underestimate the amount of time for personal healing that they'll need. In addition to taking on this new role, caring for a new life. What I completely underestimated was the amount of time I would have to devote to my own personal healing. I had two vaginal deliveries. I think a C-section is even worse because you lose a lot of, uh, you lose a lot of um, muscle control in your lower abdomen. And so I think, uh, I think going into it knowing that there's gonna be a lot of blood, a lot of painful poops, a lot of you know, scary moments for yourself in those first four weeks postpartum is, is one of the biggest misconceptions that I definitely had the first time. Yeah, because people think you deliver your baby and it's euphoria yeah, well, you for you. It, and it's, I truly believe that women block it out. They, you know, they just are laser focused on their new role and their new identity. Uh, and, and they kind of just, you know, they, they, they take it in stride, whatever they're dealing with personally, but it's, it's, it's rough. I mean, it's, it is not pretty. I'm going to call you right after. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. Hi, Hi. Big fan of the brand. I have a 20-month-old. So you have all these amazing baby things, and you have this mom thing. What else is on the mom track? Because I think exactly what you just said, we get no help yeah. and no tools. Um, I think you get a lot of stuff in the hospital gratis, I'll say, for, for free. Uh, and like we did with the turkey baster bulb syringe and the and the gas drops and the regular toothbrush a lot of that stuff that you get for free leaves a lot of room for innovation and so uh everything from the mesh underwear to the ice packs to the hemorrhoid pads to the sits bath all of that stuff could use uh i would say a millennial touch or the frida baby the frida baby sprinkle and so we're really focused, given the success that we've seen with the mom washer and how that resonates uh, with, with our customers, on improving that experience for them. Nice. Can't wait. <laughs> Will this be done in four months' time? <laughs> You'll be our guinea pig. Yes, please. Um, this has been so great. I think everyone learned a little something today. We so appreciate you being here, Chelsea. Thank you Thank for you having so much. me. I can't wait to try out the products. Oh, can't wait to hear your feedback.